Hi, everyone. We want to thank you for joining us for this year's State of the IA webcast. We are Mojo Ad, a full service student staffed advertising agency specializing in all things young. We focus on the youth and young adult or Yaya market, which is made up of 18 to 24 year olds. No one knows these consumers quite like we do. Why? Because we are them. As members of this elusive demographic, we serve as liaisons between the Yaya market and the professionals seeking to reach them. Each year, Mojo Ad conducts a comprehensive quantitative research study to shed light on who Yaya consumers are, what they value, how they behave, and most importantly, how they interact with brands during this pivotal life stage. We distributed a 63 question survey nationwide through Qualtrics. We had 724 completed responses and our sample was representative of the US Census Bureau data for 18 to 24 year olds related to race, ethnicity, and gender. We also utilized dozens of secondary resources, including Mintel, Pew Research Center, Forbes, Statista, and Nielsen, as well as past state of the Yaya reports to gain a better insight into the evolving Yaya market. Over the course of this presentation, each of our three teams, Circa, Tandem, and Zenith, will take you through our specific research findings, which are included in our annual State of the Yaya report. At the end of the presentation, we'll have time for Q&A, so you can ask us questions and learn directly from Yaya individuals. We'll be taking these questions through Zoom's Q&A feature on the bottom right of your screen and Twitter, so tweet those to us at MojoAd. Our team, Circa, found inspiration in art history as we considered how we would convey Yaya's views on the government, the economy, and the family to you all. In the mid-1800s, exclusive galleries like Francis Salon and Royal Academy sanctioned realist painters and luxe crowds, but turned away impressionists and lowly commoners. Since the outcasts didn't conform, the impressionists, a title bestowed as an insult but owned with pride, moved on to create their own space, for it wasn't the names of the Salon or Royal Academy that the artists wanted so fiercely. It was the opportunity to do and create what they loved. In a way, the Yaya demographic is the impressionist group of today. 18 to 24 year olds are not entirely understood and they're often discredited because they don't follow the status quo. In this presentation, we will guide you through a gallery curated by Yaya individuals themselves and provide six key insights, which will allow you to fully understand and appreciate the space Yaya consumers are creating for themselves. Welcome to the gallery of now. Our first key insight is that Yaya consumers have a layered sense of identity. Our research shows this sense is significantly shaped by their online and offline communities. Half of survey respondents identified as part of an online community. This could include a sports fan base, a gaming community, or a television or movie fandom. Social media has also created avenues for identities grounded in the subculture. Yaya individuals also are closer with their friends and their families and other demographics. 65% agree with the statement, it is important for me to remain close to my family. Furthermore, six in 10 Yaya individuals find it important to have their family on board when they make big life decisions. This trend extends to friends as well. Roughly four in 10 people within the Yaya age group find it difficult to make a life decision different from what their friends are doing. Additionally, 45% indicated that they do not feel comfortable moving to a place where they don't know anyone. Despite finding significant belonging and identity in community, Yaya individuals also seek personalization and uniqueness. When asked to choose between a luxury product or a product that was unique to them, 60, 80, 68% chose a unique product. This layered sense of identity has significant implications for marketing success. Family is a huge source of comfort, stability, and identity for Yaya individuals. Therefore, it is key for you to prioritize this connection in your products and messaging. We foresee a growth in the demand for items that provide connectivity and messaging services. Yaya individuals pride themselves on their uniqueness and lack of conformity. Avoid one-size-fits-all messaging and generalization. Our next insight is plugged in and disconnected. The events of 2020 have changed how Yaya individuals connect with their communities, for better or for worse. Overall, Yaya consumers have plugged into the news, but unfortunately, they're also overstimulated and struggle to find meaningful connections. Three in four Yaya individuals indicated that they are more aware of the news and current events than they were before 2020. They also prefer to get their news from social media. 
The most popular platforms for news gathering are Instagram and YouTube, followed by TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitter. However, despite feeling more aware of current events, consuming the news is not uplifting for the majority of the IA demographic. 66% feel less optimistic after consuming the news. When asked how the events of 2020 have changed their perspective, six in 10 survey respondents feel less connected to their community and nearly one in four feel much less connected. What's more, 50% felt less cared for by their community after 2020. When it comes to feeling empowered, survey results were mixed. 54% feel less empowered after the events of 2020. However, it's important to note that while Black respondents and white respondents indicated they felt much less empowered at roughly the same rate, Black respondents were more likely to say they felt much more empowered than white respondents. You can be confident that Yaya individuals are aware of current events and news items, especially if they're trending on social media sites. Marketers need to look for opportunities to highlight good news and positive stories. Be cautious of seeming pessimistic or creating content that seems to play off of anxiety. Look for innovative opportunities to highlight people showing up for one another. Our next insight is betwixt and between. According to our data, Yaya individuals are evenly split on how they feel about the future of US society or the current state of American institutions. Just over half of respondents think that the United States is the greatest country in the world. Survey results suggested that political partisanship plays a role in perceptions of the United States. Those who indicated that they were strongly affiliated with either political party were more likely to have strong feelings about this topic. Well, 58% resonated with the statement, 10 years from now, the United States will be a better society than it is today. Anxiety and fear appeared when they were asked to identify their feelings about the future of American society. It's clear that Yaya individuals have mixed feelings about what the United States will have to offer in the future. You should be hesitant to clearly define what's next because Yaya consumers don't have that confidence. Their feelings are contradictory and can change on a dime during these form of years of early adulthood. You should also carefully evaluate any decision to appeal to a sense of patriotism or national pride, which can be a major turnoff for younger consumers with a pessimistic outlook for the country's future. Our next insight is anxiety breeds action. Yaya individuals are anxious about a variety of issues facing our society. In our survey, Yaya individuals were asked how frequently they worry about specific issues on a scale from always to never. The most frequent worries for our respondents were police brutality, sexual harassment, discrimination, and a global pandemic. Roughly one in three always worry about these issues. Additionally, one in four worry about the threats of mass shootings, unemployment, and climate change. And finally, one in five indicated they always worry about the threat of an economic recession, terrorist attacks, and the destabilization of the government. Beyond individual stressors, Yaya consumers are also worried about society as a whole. Three in four identified that they feel anxious when thinking about the future of U.S. society. While Yaya individuals are anxious and concerned, they aren't waiting for someone else to come along and fix things. Surprisingly and conclusively, one in three indicated they feel individuals should be most responsible for solving social problems facing our country today. Moreover, three in four think their actions can create a positive change in society. Finally, two in three think their generation will make the world a better place. This activist mindset is reflected in our data. In the past year, 84% of respondents engaged in an activist activity, which we defined as the practice of taking direct, direct action to achieve political or social goals. The most popular actions were keeping up with the news, voting, reading materials to educate yourself on a topic, and signing petitions. Yaya consumers want brand messaging that helps ease their anxiety and stress about the future, but they can see through a facade. You should take care to maintain honesty and transparency in your marketing efforts. Yaya consumers seek out opportunities to do good in their communities. Marketers can capitalize on this by providing consumers with options to give back and emphasize corporate social responsibility and charitable giving efforts. Our next insight is authenticity and assurance. When evaluating brands before making a purchase decision, Yaya consumers expect authenticity. The more assured they are in a brand's integrity, the more likely they are to purchase. Yaya individuals are generally cynical of brands taking action on social issues, with three and four saying that they are skeptical of brands that claim to support a social cause. 
Not to mention, 72% of respondents agree with the statement, companies will pretend to do good just so I will buy from them. However, taking a stand on social issues is still expected. Roughly two thirds of Yaya consumers agree they would stop buying for a company or brand that behaves in a way which doesn't align with Yaya consumers' values. The status stresses how important it is for brands to assure consumers that their brand is authentic. It's encouraging data for brands who were previously wary of taking a stand on social issues. According to our survey data, six in 10 think it is authentic when a brand posts on social media in support of a social cause or releases a press statement taking a stand on a social issue. Additionally, 74% said it is authentic when a brand donates a percentage of its profits to a social or charitable cause. For you to be successful, you need to be both authentic and assuring in your messaging. It's crucial to show consumers exactly what steps your brand is taking to make a difference in the world. By making a commitment to practicing authenticity and taking a stand on social issues, you have the opportunity to be top of mind with Yaya consumers. Final insight is that for Yaya consumers, money talks. Ultimately, Yaya consumers prioritize cost over social stances. Yaya individuals were careful and deliberate with their spending and saving habits. Our data overwhelmingly showed that the Yaya demographic is prioritizing a secure future rather than one-time experiences. When asked if they would rather spend $5,000 on a vacation or invest the money, more than 70% of survey respondents chose to invest. Additionally, 65% follow a budget or set financial goals, which shows their frugality and dedication to their own future. Forbes labels them as the pragmatic generation who are ultimately motivated by having a secure life outside of work. This is especially true for members of the Yaya demographic who have personally witnessed some form of financial insecurity. More than half of respondents who had experienced food or employment insecurity said that financial stability was extremely important. The Yaya market is motivated by career success more so than personal relationships. When Yaya individuals were asked to consider what they need to have a successful life, having financial security, a job with benefits and purpose, and money saved for retirement were ranked more highly than having kids, getting married, or earning a college degree. Marketing implications for this insight are as follows. Yaya consumers need to be shown why they should put their money towards something. This is not an age group prone to impulse buying. There are opportunities for finance companies to reach a new generation. Moreover, Yaya consumers are incredibly career oriented and have an interest in saving for the future. When looking to hire within the Yaya market, be transparent with salary and benefits. Art can move people to do many different things. The same can be said about the last 12 months. For this reason, it's difficult to predict which direction Yaya consumers will go. But what we do know is that 18 to 24 year olds are feeling disconnected from society and each other. That's where you all come in. Marketers have the ability to create community. Tap into this potential and inspire young people to redesign and remold the country's social, political, and economic landscapes the way they need you to. It will benefit you to listen closely to the next segment of the Soy webcast as Tandem delves deeper into the ways that you can impact the physical and digital lives of Yaya consumers. For Yaya consumers, their online space is much more than a hobby or a pastime. It's their home. They live, eat, and breathe a virtual identity. So if you want to reach these digital homebodies, you can't just be in the neighborhood. You need to knock on their digital doors. But these doors are password protected. Does it seem like no matter what you try, you just can't access them? Reaching Yaya consumers doesn't have to be encrypted. We're here to help you gain access to this elusive demographic. Welcome home screen. A Yaya consumers home screen is beyond just a landing page. It's where they live. 60% of Yaya consumers feel at home when they are online. Now, let us introduce you to a new generation of digital consumers. There is no distinction between this age group's online experience and their offline experience, making their realities one. 
67% of Yaya individuals say they match their online identities to their physical ones, which further links this connection. This means that their online experience should be as rich and immersive as their offline experience. While Yaya consumers feel at home when they're online, they're more nomadic in their media consumption. With 66% of Yaya consumers seeking new experiences online, they roam the internet in search of self-discovery and to further explore the world around them. In fact, 76% of them agree with the statement, social media allows me to understand different people and cultures. The comfort Yaya consumers feel on the internet has opened the door for them to freely discover new ideas about themselves and who they aspire to be. Although this market may wander, they're far from lost. This led us to name them digital nomads. Yaya consumers live, work, and play online, so their virtual life becomes their window into the world. They want brands that can offer extraordinary omni-channel experiences that can surpass shopping in physical stores. Marketers can then serve as a GPS, guiding the Yaya market to roam and discover new content that fulfills their need to seek new directions. So what brand does this well? Spotify. In addition to having one of the youngest user bases, Spotify guides digital nomads to discover music. Instead of seeking out popular or branded artists, they want to forge their own path to discover new music. Spotify does just that through personalized playlists with new artists and genres for listeners, like their Discover Weekly playlist. The Discover Weekly playlist utilizes a taste profile that assigns scores to various artists and genres based on the user's listening habits, resulting in a perfectly curated, unique to you playlist. Let's profile who these consumers are on social media. At this life stage, Yaya individuals are learning who they are and more importantly, who they want to be. These users actively curate and customize their identities both offline and online to form what we call a curation of self. Their individual expression is seen and built through their digital lives. The way they customize their home screen or who they follow on Instagram speaks to their evolving personal identity. Yaya consumers enjoy exploring different platforms to curate their ever-changing identities. As they do this, brands should meet them where they're at to help them discover their individuality. So what brand does this well? Function of Beauty. Noted for being the world leader in customizable beauty, Function of Beauty offers tailor-made hair care, skin care, and body products based on a quiz, allowing customers to purchase products made specifically for their needs. Realizing that one type does not fit all, Function of Beauty has elevated its standards to meet the needs of each individual customer, no matter the hair type or skin type. Customers can also have their names printed on the product labels, showing that it doesn't take much to have customers feel involved in brand experiences by adding a special touch of personalization. Let's kick our feet up and take a look at the entertainment folder. Entertainment, water, food, and shelter. Digital nomads are redefining what is essential to them and making the most room for entertainment. They expect to be entertained wherever they land. To digital nomads, what's the point of being online if they're not being entertained? And what better way to stay entertained than binge watching your favorite show? The largest percentage of digital nomads pay for streaming services with their own money. 53% of respondents said they're personally willing to spend over $20 per month for all their streaming services combined. Hey, you know what really irritates me? When I'm in the middle of something and... Woo, 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 state of the IA downloads, free, 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 download this link here. Ugh, this is exactly what I was talking about. As a digital nomad, nothing annoys me more than being interrupted by an ad during my essential entertainment time. Brands have to be a lot more subtle than that. Skip typical ads, product placement is the key to success with this market. In fact, consumers in this demographic view product placement more positively compared to traditional advertising. Through their need to be entertained 24 seven, Yaya audiences adopt an entertainment mindset. And it's suggested that brands tap into this mindset by making their platform a world of entertainment, socialization, and self-expression. One brand that taps into the entertainment mindset is of course, TikTok. As any TikTok user knows, what started as a quick five-minute break on the app can easily turn into hours. 
Scrolling from video to video on the app creates an endless cycle of entertainment. This app is so successful because of its customized algorithms and hyper curated content. One user's For You page can look entirely different from others, all based on what kind of content they want to see, adding a new level of personalization. From unboxing videos, to dance tutorials, to video game footage, to whatever this is, <laughs> TikTok offers a variety of entertainment in 15 to 60 second videos. Another type of entertainment that is essential to digital nomads is sports. This life stage is redefining how they view traditional sports, whether that is through social media or short form videos. This trend exposes a shift in values. Digital nomads want to stay informed about sports and athletes, but don't feel the need to watch a four hour game. But this decline is not met without a replacement. What we found is the rise of a new kind of athlete. Digital nomads are hanging up their cleats and reaching for their controllers. Traditional sports viewership is declining while esports participation and viewership are growing exponentially. According to Statista, the global esports market was valued at just over $1 billion in 2021. From our primary research, we found that 37% of respondents participate in esports, and 44% of Yaya individuals are gaming daily. It might surprise you to know that 36% of these daily users are women. As brands increase their foothold in the gaming industry, they need to acknowledge the presence of female gamers. Marketers had the chance to reach the entire gaming community by creating a supportive and inclusive network for female gamers. Esports and streaming allow for more authentic, genuine interaction between athlete and fan that isn't found in mainstream sports. 44% of Yaya individuals are loyal to specific streamers. Because of this trust, almost half of respondents enjoy watching sponsored streams, and 31% regularly purchase products promoted by a streamer. Even more, 59% of respondents trust the recommendations of the streamers they follow. So if you haven't already, switch to Twitch. According to our primary research, 53% of Yaya consumers are watching Twitch content. This live streaming platform is a hub for Yaya consumers' interests, varying from esports and video games to music and even lifestyle content. What sets Twitch apart is the element of community. Millions of users can come together to interact, chat, and make their own entertainment. Now that you have unlocked the virtual abodes of Yaya consumers, make yourself at home. As you learned today, being online is not just a pastime, it's their lifeline, providing a comforting space for these digital homebodies to learn about who they are and who they aspire to be. In order for your brand to get ahead, it's important to take a look inside the home screens of this group. Thanks for logging in. Now we're gonna switch profiles so that Team Zenith can give you insight into the Yaya consumer's view on work and careers. Working careers for the Yaya demographic have undergone a metamorphosis. Our job is to show how so that you can better recruit these budding professionals to join your team. There's no this has undergone a dramatic digital transformation over the past year. Office meetings have turned into video calls. Sold out stadiums that were once packed with fans are now filled with cardboard cutouts. And instead of sprinting halfway across campus, students can just roll out of bed and log into their lectures. But even in the wake of uncertainty and a shifting professional environment, employers have a unique opportunity to connect with and change with the IA workforce. Yaya individuals are in a transitional life stage. These 18 to 24 year olds are living on their own for the first time ever, attending colleges and trade schools in new places, entering the workforce and discovering who they are and who they want to become. They're going through a metamorphosis. But while Yaya professionals were spreading their wings and just starting their careers, COVID-19 hit changing and disrupting the traditional workforce that they had briefly come to know. Pandemonium ensued, causing nearly a quarter of these freshly independent Yaya individuals to move back home. The Yaya workforce went from living on their own to crawling back to their childhood bedrooms. 
Compared to other age groups, it's clear that the Yaya demographic experienced the most disruption in their careers. In fact, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that Yaya unemployment rates increased the most over the past year, rising by 21% for 18 and 19 year olds and 17% for 20 to 24 year olds. Even though these numbers have since improved, they still remain significantly higher than pre-pandemic levels. Even those who kept their jobs experienced disruption due to their careers shifting from in-person to virtual. And despite being digital natives, 82% of Yaya respondents still reported that they missed something about in-person work. Though Yaya professionals easily navigate virtual life, the switch to a hybrid workplace shouldn't erase what they value the most in-person connection, which was ranked as their top workplace communication preference. When asked what they miss most about the in-person workplace, more than a third of Yaya individuals miss working alongside coworkers, nearly a quarter miss the sense of community, and others miss social events, regular feedback, and casual water cooler talk. Despite the switch to a virtual workplace, IBM has kept this sense of connection and community alive through its work from home pledge. The pledge commits IBM's employees to supporting one another with daily chores like picking up and delivering groceries or watching the kids for a night. As a result of these sweeping workplace changes, 65% of Yaya respondents agree to some extent that they feel uncertain about the future of the job market. On top of that, 57% of Yaya individuals associate negative emotions with the job search process. When breaking that statistic down further, 40% of respondents said stress, 11% said worry, 6% said fear, with other write-ins including tedium, anxiety, and feeling drained. The disruptive events of the past year have led 64% of Yaya respondents to agree that they're feeling burnt out. Nearly 40% of Yaya, of Yaya professionals agree to some extent that they changed their career path due to COVID-19 with over 40% also agreeing to some extent that COVID-19 has made them choose a more practical career rather than pursuing a passion. Despite the undeniable disruption caused by COVID-19, throwing their lives and careers into disarray, Yaya professionals are redefining resilience and adapting to the new virtual workplace. Surprisingly, 63% of Yaya respondents agree to some extent that they feel optimistic about the future of the job market proving just how resourceful and adaptable these professionals are, even in times of uncertainty. Speaking of being adaptable, Yaya individuals didn't let the absence of traditional jobs stop them from pursuing work. Nearly two out of three respondents said that they have an active side hustle, with 32% doing so to have extra spending money, 28% to earn income towards a goal, 23% to pay their bills, and 15% to monetize a passion. Even though their lives and careers were thrown off balance, the Yaya demographic found ways to adapt to this changing workforce while also preserving their personal happiness. At the end of the day, 60% of Yaya professionals disagree that COVID-19 affected pursuing their passion, a true testament to their grit and resilience during a dramatic year of change. Yaya professionals are also finding ways to turn over a new leaf in the workplace. When it comes to being promoted, this demographic wants to walk the bridge, then climb the ladder. Yaya employees will gravitate toward companies that provide them with opportunities to learn, grow, and ultimately transform, both horizontally by learning new roles within the company and vertically through climbing the ranks. Our primary data revealed that nearly eight out of 10 Yaya employees agree that it is important to experience a variety of roles at work. Their desire to take on new jobs and learn the ins and outs of a company proves just how willing Yaya individuals are to grow, both personally and professionally. Edelman offers a unique rotational program and sends its top performers to live, work, and learn about a, diff a different professional role in another country for up to 18 months. Employers should implement regular learning about various roles and the company so that employees can be hired internally without lowering productivity. It's no surprise that the Yaya demographic has been called the most self-motivated age group ever. Top factors that motivate the Yaya workforce to get out of bed in the morning include learning, future careers, and new opportunities, according to an e-hearsay journal report. 
Receiving recognition for their hard work is also a huge motivator for YAYA professionals, as 83% of respondents said that they would like to receive some kind of affirmation for a job well done. 39% prefer new roles or responsibilities, praise from a boss or coworker, and opportunities for promotion. All three of these top reward preferences are key to motivating and affirming YAYA employees as they evolve and progress in their careers. Simply put, the YAYA demographic values building relationships with their coworkers, working toward achieving milestones or advancement, and advocating for something they believe in. Speaking of what they believe in, nearly 80% of YAYA respondents agree to some extent that it is important to work for a company that values corporate social responsibility. And the same percentage of respondents would change jobs if their employer's values don't fit with their own. The YAYA workforce used diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts as a requirement, according to Deloitte. These professionals expect companies to take a transparent, data-driven approach to DEI, which means setting, communicating, and measuring quantitative goals related to hiring and promoting minority employees within the organization. The YAYA workforce is tired of lip service. Google claims it's all about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but beneath the surface, it's a different story. Google's security team disproportionately checked Black and Latino workers' IDs around campus, making them feel as if they didn't belong. Google failed to create the safe and open space for conversation and change necessary for all workplaces. Employers should not tokenize their minority employees to gain DEI credibility, as the YAYA demographic will see through that and will not want to work with you. Some companies are already doing a great job though. For instance, L'Oreal has a variety of employee think tanks, such as one for women of color, in order to create a welcoming environment. Companies like Apple and Microsoft pay employees $25 an hour for volunteering, and Patagonia even provides select employees free travel to volunteer on mission trips in third world countries. If employers won't change, Yaya professionals will. 69% of respondents agree that they would walk away from a job offer if a company didn't actively support diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, proving that empty promises lead to empty offices. As digital natives, Yaya individuals have the potential to thrive within an efficient virtual workplace. When meeting in person isn't an option, they prefer email than text. Over half of Yaya individuals consider video chat to be a face-to-face -face interaction to some degree. However, for the sake of efficiency, this group would rather skip the synchronous Zoom call if it could have been relayed in an email. Because more than a quarter of respondents reported email as their favorite form of workplace communication, employers should take advantage of this whenever possible. Companies should also provide Yaya individuals with flexibility. Allow your employees to plan their own schedules and select the days that they want to be in-person and virtual. For example, Netflix provides its employees with free range to work asynchronously without collecting work hours or vacation time. All in all, the Yaya demographic is changing and we've only scratched the surface. Our full report contains even more compelling facts about the Yaya workforce, so you can ultimately change with us. We've spent the last several months analyzing the 18 to 24 year old market, conducting a primary survey with over 700 respondents and compiling dozens of secondary research sources. Our three volumes State of the Yaya Report takes a deeper look at the trends transforming the Yaya demographics attitudes towards things like politics and values, virtual life and working careers in 2021. The State of the Yaya Report is currently available to download. Scan the QR code now to access the eBooks. This officially concludes the 2021 State of the Yaya live webcast. Thank you so much for listening. Our Mojo ad staff is now open to your questions. Amazing. I'm so happy to see that some questions are already coming in the Q&A feature. So continue to send those in so we can answer those for the rest of the hour. So our first question comes from a former Mojo Ad staff member, Caitlin. So Caitlin wants to know, how do you infer Yaya individuals view nonprofits and cause forward brands? Madison, did you wanna answer that one? Yeah, thank you, Josh. And thank you so much for this question. Um, I think 
one thing that our data definitely reflected was an increase in this activist mindset among Yaya individuals. And I think a huge part of that is um, a greater level of participation with nonprofits and cause forward brands. I think 24% of our respondents said that in the last year they've donated money to a social cause or organization and 19% said that they volunteered with a social organization or nonprofit. So I think in that sense, there's um, kind of a new level of participation and engagement with nonprofits. Um, I also think that our data really reflected that Yaya individuals view nonprofits as very authentic in the way that they are charitable and consistent. So I think that um, really Yaya's find consistent brands that are very committed to social causes to be very authentic as well. Thank you, Madison. Christina, you wanted to add on? Yeah, I just wanted to also say that from a working careers perspective, 78% of Yaya's agree that it's important to work for a company that values corporate social responsibility. Um, and we also found from our research that nearly half want to want work that has meaning and purpose beyond just getting paid. So that really tells me that Yaya's think highly of cause forward brands and want to work for them. And even if it's not a nonprofit, they value companies that do good in the world, whether that be through direct donations, fundraisers, or just providing employees with paid volunteer hours. Thank you for that, Christina. Awesome. We're gonna move on to one of the uh, questions we had in the chat. So Maddie wants to know, Yaya's don't want to be interrupted by ads while they're consuming entertainment but are they willing to pay more for an ad-free environment like on Hulu, especially if they're only willing to pay $20 for all streaming platforms? Elizabeth? Yeah, I can start this one out. So 53% of Yaya's are willing to spend over $20 for their streaming platforms. And what we found through some of our secondary research was finding that they really value the experience and the content they're getting. So they're willing to fork out a little bit more money to maybe have reduced ads or fully no ads, um, but it really comes down to like what content they're getting. And that's why we also talked a lot about product placement because it's a more natural way for them to already be setting that money and see the things. They're more likely gonna check out while they're watching those ads if they do have, um, you know, one of the, the non-free with the ads. So it's definitely comes down to how much, I guess they want to see versus not, or how many platforms they wanna have. Because at this point, there's so many platforms that if they want to have a lot, they will do that and have ads or they'll choose, I just want Hulu, I just want Netflix, no ads and I'm covered. So it comes on the consumer, which we showed digital nomads, they're going to be where they want to be and it's very down to who it is. But if anybody wants to piggyback off. Awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Did anyone else want to add on? If not, we can move on to our next question. Amazing. So we have another question from Caitlin and Caitlin also wants to know, in your opinion, what types of causes and mission forward brands are Yaya's likely to invest in? Sam? Um, I think the brands that come to mind to me are specifically brands that care a lot about environmentalism and uh, making an actual impact in their practices for environmental sustainability. Um, brands like Patagonia, really. Thank you. And Abby? I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies. Um, I think that the main thing we came across in our research for working careers is that Yaya individuals just value transparency and honesty above all. So um, some of the brands I can think of that we mentioned are like L'Oreal, um, Sam just said Patagonia. I know another one that's big is Ben and Jerry's um, because they're just willing to take a stance on something and then take um, actionable steps to show that they really support that. Awesome. Thank you, Abby. We'll move on to our next question. So both Grace and Devin wanted to know, what was the most surprising piece of data that you all found that goes against common stereotypes of yayas? or what was the most surprising research in general? Emma? Yeah, I can take this. So I was on the working careers team um, and something that was surprised us and kind of went against the stereotypes of YI individuals is the whole idea of horizontal movement in the workplace instead of vertical movement and climbing the ranks. I think a lot of individuals think that Yaya um, professionals just wanna be greedy and climb up, the rank, climb up the ranks as fast as they can. 
Um, but that's not the case. We found that they actually enjoy horizontal movement before that. So that means, you know, trying out multiple jobs within an organization before climbing up those ranks. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. Madison, did you want to add on? Yeah, I think something that definitely surprised my team circa was this idea of frugality that showed up in our secondary research and then we explored further in our primary research. Um, but just this idea that Yaya individuals grew up during the Great Recession and they really saw their parents take a lot of financial hits. And so coming out of that as adults, as they're transitioning in this time of their life, they're really focused on saving and investing for their future. And that was just something that was really surprising and kind of inconsistent with our past Yaya data um, from years past where Yaya's were really wanting to spend money on experiences, but now it's kind of just wanting to really prioritize financial security. Thanks, Madison. Allie, did you want to elaborate? Yeah, so I was on Team Tandem and we looked into entertainment and something that really excited us that we found from our research was everything regarding Twitch. So a lot of us just had no idea so many yayas were on Twitch and then just to see the trajectory of what that platform is right now, what it can be. So we all previously before diving into our primary and secondary research thought it was maybe just gaming and sports, but really it has a whole community of music lifestyle and there's a niche for everybody on there. So it's really exciting for marketers. There is a place for you on Twitch and that is definitely a space to enter right now. Thanks, Allie. Love the insight. Awesome. We'll move on to our next question now. So Marley wants to know, when you say Yaya's prefer an email, this could have been an email. Does this include instant messages like Slack? I think this is a great question for our third team. Michaela. So actually in our primary data, we actually separated them by email, text message, video call, and then we actually separated business communication platforms completely from email. And while emails ranked first, text message, video call, and then fourth, we had business communications platforms. So those were not ranked as highly in the minds of our Yaya professionals, um, but it did come in fourth, but just not as high as an email. Awesome. Thanks, Michaela. Allie? I think something we also found really interesting is that 51% of Yaya's agree to some extent that a video call is considered a face-to-face -face interaction for them. So I think it's, um, a really interesting line between really craving in-person connection um, and being face-to-face -face with coworkers and establishing a relationship and also getting work done efficiently um, and being able to be trusted with tasks and move uh, forward very quickly in the workplace. So um, Yaya's really crave both is um, being efficient in the workplace, but also establishing relationships. Thanks, Allie. We're gonna move on to Jake's question in the Q&A. So Jake wants to know, how do Yaya folks feel about programmatic, individually targeted advertising? Are y'all happy to have relevant ads or creeped out by the specificity that you didn't sign up for? Emma? Yeah, so uh, I'll speak a little bit to myself as well as research if someone would like to hop into this. Um, but I think that, um, you know, last semester, we also worked with at t the client and privacy with data and those kind of items. And I think that people of our generation really do not mind giving up um, some parts of their privacy, quote unquote, um, to have this personalized ads. I know it's a joke among people like our age, but I mean, at this point, if I'm looking for a pair of black sunglasses with a little bit of gold in it, I kind of just hold up my phone to my face and start talking to it. And eventually I'll get an ad. So it's pretty helpful. Um, but I think, you know, personalized advertisements, while they might be more uh, enticing and tempting to like engage with, it's also more relevant. And at the end of the day, um, this demographic wants relevant content, whether that's through advertisements or through kind of organic uh, means. Awesome. Thank you, Emma. It looks like we're getting a lot of questions in the Q&A, so we're going to keep it moving. Allison wants to know, did you come across any statistics talking about Zoom fatigue? It sounds like Yaya's miss in-person interactions, but they'd rather skip the face-to-face -face Zoom interactions for meetings. Why is that? Kaylee, it says you want to answer? Yeah, so hi, Allison. I was on Team Tandem, which did research on online life. 
Um, from an entertainment point of view, 81% of Yaya's are looking forward to attending large live events post pandemic. Um, the events that Yaya's are looking most forward to attending include movie theaters, concerts, music festivals, and sporting events. And while we found that Yaya's are interested in returning to this normal life, um, many still appreciate the virtual experiences and are interested in seeing more of a hybrid approach um, to entertainment consumption. So they like to have an option and choice between a virtual and in-person entertainment experience. Thanks, Kaylee. Sydney? Yes, so, and to kind of talk about it from a work and careers perspective, as Ali kind of said earlier, we actually found that 51% of Yaya respondents said that they consider video face-to-face -face interaction. Um, but I do believe that just cons computer screen time does cause fatigue. And so they're trying to battle like missing this sense of community and trying to make it as good as possible while also um, maximizing their efficiency. So again, just kind of being mindful of how many Zoom calls you have and then uh, really trying to email them as we talked about earlier, um, when it can be sent in an email, uh, straightforward and simple. Awesome. Thank you, Sydney. We're going to move on to our next question from Lacey. Lacey says, great presentation. Thank you, Lacey. How do you suggest brands develop an inclusive environment for female gamers within the streaming and esports community? Dawson, did you want to start us off on this one? Yeah, so I think the biggest recommendation we had is to be authentic with your advertising. Female gamers want products and ads to relate to them. They want to feel empowered and be able to show off their gaming styles without being hypersexualized and treated and they want to be treated as equals 30 percent of gamers are female so it's really important that brands are doing this in a way to where they aren't just uh putting the spotlight on them but are actually really just making them feel included because for so long this has been such a male dominated industry it's so important to make sure that you're really highlighting female gamers and with over 70 percent of yaya's spending money on gaming every single year it's such a big industry that's continuing to grow that you'll continue to see it decline and i'll let Peyton continue the rest as she actually is a female gamer yeah Peyton. Hi, thanks Dawson. Yeah, as Dawson said, I am a very avid female gamer. So I love this question. Thanks for answering or thanks for asking it and I will answer it. Um, basically, unfortunately, gender is something that's such a big part of female experience online, whether it's just like in a lobby or a streaming room or anything like it dictates dictates basically every part of the female virtual experience. Um, I think that the right approach would be gender focused, not exclusively female. So things that are, you know, marketed to me without depending on stereotype are great. So like great examples of this are like, you know, sponsoring female streamers or creating video game merchandises in women's sizes, which is actually harder to find than you might think. I literally have so much trouble finding video game merch anyway. Um, but I think that overall, you should really show you're supporting female gamers without stereotyping them and show them that you value them without isolating them. Kind of what Dawson said, but yeah, thanks so much for that question. I love it. Love the passion, Peyton. So our next question comes from Grace and Grace wants to know more about burnout. So burnout has been common, uh, been a common theme before and during COVID-19. How has this impacted Yaya's and how are they operating in the virtual world? Allie, did you wanna answer this one? Yeah, thank you so much for this question. Um, I worked on the working careers team. So 64% of our respondents agreed to some extent with the statement, um, I am burnt out. And in relation to work and careers, 65% um, agree to some extent that they feel uncertain about the future of the job market. So we see this direct correlation between feeling burnt out and feeling anxious about um, their future in regards to searching for jobs. So I think this uh, feeling of burnt out just really affects um, Yaya people's anxiety overall and um, especially in relation to searching for jobs in postgraduates. Awesome. Thanks, Ali. So Devin wants to know, did you find that there was any pushback from Yaya's regarding product placement with influencers? For example, people thinking that someone they look up to is selling out or are becoming inauthentic to monetize their audience. How should companies look, sorry, how should companies looking to do product placement approach this and balance authenticity with getting their marketing out there? Awesome. Dawson, you want to start us off? Yeah, so from the research we did with Twitch specifically, we know that 
marketers definitely can be successful with this if the content that they're using for sponsorship relates to exactly what the user is watching. So for example, over 50% of Twitch users didn't mind sponsored streams as long as the product or placement was actually relevant to what they were watching. So for example, if it was a gaming headset or say it was a gaming chair or say it was even just a video on tips and tricks on how to do better on a stream. I know Red Bull's done that with NBA 2K21 and with other games as well. So as long as it's relevant to whatever you're watching, uh, Yaya's really don't mind watching that content. Awesome. And Lauren? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to add on based on personal experience and also my experience with influencer marketing and past internships and jobs. Um, I would say go for the people that relate to your brand most authentically rather than who has the most followers. Um, so I was working with McDonald's and we wouldn't necessarily go for the mom that was super healthy foods, always cooked perfectly packed lunches for their kids. Instead, we picked maybe more on the go mom that was often showing her everyday life and what her kids ate and what their realistic life looked like. And even though she may not quite has had as many followers, I think just making sure that the influencer that you choose is relevant and can actually speak to what you are trying to sell authentically is key. Because I know as many of us scroll on Instagram, we can see when people are promoting for something that they don't actually use or wouldn't necessarily have in their everyday life. It can kind of seem inauthentic and turn us off a bit. Um, such a good take, Lauren. So Angela wants to know, what recommendations do you have for brands and streaming platforms to better serve their undeserved female audiences in an authentic way? Is there anything else we want to add or did we kind of answer this question um, before? I just want to make sure we have time for every question. Dawson, are you good? Okay, we're going to move on. Thanks for the question, Angela. So Stephanie wants to know, how do you think that permanent work from home will impact how you approach your career choices? Sydney? Yeah, so um, again, I was on the working careers team and we found that nearly 40% of our respondents um, had to stop following their passions and choose a more practical career path because of COVID-19. So I'm not sure that that's directly work from home related. It kind of builds off of each other a little bit, but um, I definitely think that people are really reconsidering um, what is a priority to them, and it has really kind of made them look back and reflect on their own career choices about um, just if passion is their priority, is it getting a job that will support them, and things like that. Awesome. Thanks, Sydney. Christina? Yeah, also adding on to that, um, COVID kind of just made us realize that there's a lot of convenience and capabilities that we have with online work. It really provides a lot more balance, work-life balance for employees and flexibility. And our research found that 62% of Yaya's classified flexible work hours as a need versus a want. So in terms of career choices, I think that Yaya's will be more selective um, picking companies that do provide them that flexibility now that they have an online workplace. And lastly, Allie. We also saw there's a really intense competition for jobs right now, um, which makes Gen Z more risk adverse um, to choosing careers that might not exactly fit with their quote unquote dream job. So um, while Yaya employees are really optimistic, um, they are settling for jobs just because of um, COVID and how competitive the job market Awesome. Thanks, Sally. So we have another question about working careers. How much does the emotional experience of employees matter at work for Yaya's? For example, is it important that companies become trauma informed in their communications, approaches, policies, etc.? Sydney? Yeah, so this is a great question. Um, I really think that it is important for companies to become trauma informed and um, things like that. Those are great ideas. Um, and based off of our research, we really found that open communication can kind of help with this kind of barrier a little bit um, in between things and make company and make them feel more um, connected with the company um, and just kind of having that open communication and flexibility in the workplace. Awesome. And Emma. 
Hi, yeah, so I worked for a company last year which did a lot of research into companies and values and ethics, uh, more for crisis communications, but rather than preventing um, or mitigating the crisis in the end, it worked toward to prevent crises in the future. Um, rather than a handbook, it looked kind of at these values. Uh, these emotional experiences are super important. Um, it's also important though to retain employee privacy um, to make sure you can get consent from these employees who have endured the trauma at the companies, um, you know, being able to have that training in the first place, being able to make sure you're sticking to your values and that all your employees um, genuinely know and practice their values. Um, I hope that every single person in your company could go around and cite your values and how important they are to you. Um, and if not, I think that's a problem. I think it's a problem when it comes to trauma um, and working through those things, but definitely emotional attachment, um, but making sure you get consent before you do all those things uh, is super important in the workplace. Thanks, Emma. Angela has a question. Angela wants to know, how do you believe the lack of in-person interaction during the last year affected social media use and the already online lives of Yaya consumers? Ali's eager to answer this one. Yeah, thanks for the question, Angela. And this is definitely something that we were asking ourselves this when we started out our research at the beginning of the semester. Um, and it's definitely something that led us to our insight of naming 18 to 24 year olds digital nomads rather than digital natives. So what we found is that digital nomads have more self-control in their consumption habits. And this is seen um, th through this last year through their social media consumption. So from our secondary research, we found that 43% of Yaya consumers take a couple hours away from their phone every day. So they are um, self-aware enough to understand that it could be crossing a line and that even though their lives are intertwined, it's okay to take time away from the digital life. It's the same thing as maybe going to the gym every day or making sure you eat a portion of vegetables every day. It's taking a couple hours away from your phone to lead that balanced lifestyle to be a self-aware digital nomad. I love that, Ali. Awesome. So we have a news media question for our journalism students here. How can the news media benefit from your research? For example, emailed personalized newsletters would seem to be right on target for this group, right? Madison? Yeah, thank you so much for this question. Um, I would just like to add briefly that I think a huge uh, appeal for Yaya individuals and how they get their news is video formats. So I think our top, the top platforms that Yaya individuals use to get their news every day is um, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. So I think having some sort of video um, messaging is very important to appeal to these individuals. Thanks, Madison. Lauren? I just wanted to add on um, definitely emphasizing what you're doing on social media specifically. Um, I know the past few years, there's been a lot of talk of fake news and misinformation on the internet. And to be honest, it can be true, especially on social media platforms like TikTok, where anyone can just upload anything without any credentials. Um, so making sure to take the time to um, have a presence on social media. So where you can specifically take up that space and provide news rather than the average Joe that's telling a million teens something that may not be true. Um, so news outlets should definitely take a stand on social media specifically. So it can be easily accessible to our Yaya consumers because we know how much they love to consume news through social media. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lauren. And Lily, you wanted to add on? Yeah, I just real quickly wanted to say a great example of the news media using social media um, is the Washington Post TikTok. It has been wildly popular with the 18 to 24 year old Yaya demographic. And we see the reason that it's so popular is because like my team tandem discussed is it taps into that entertainment mindset. It finds the Yaya's where they're at, which is social media and wanting to be entertained. So I think news outlets need to kind of tap into that and find how that they find how they can use entertainment um, as a way to um, kind of talk about news stories and headlines and such. So Washington Post is a great um, example of that. Awesome. And it looks like we have a question, couple of questions about TikTok in the chat. So maybe we can combine the two. So Alexis wants to know, which brands do you feel are using TikTok well? And then Allison wants to know, are there any brands on TikTok that you believe are doing a great job at marketing to Yaya's? What are they doing that makes them stand out? Awesome. Melina? 
Thank you, Alexis and Allison, Great Minds Think Alike, for these questions about brands that are using TikTok well. The main goal is to have something that users authentically want to follow on TikTok so it doesn't just feel like your brand producing brand related content all the time. So kind of straying away from just posts that are like, we have this new thing, come buy it, is something that people really want to follow the page. Chipotle finds authentic user generated content. Of course, people make TikToks about what they order at Chipotle all the time or, you know, my favorite order. Or I asked someone to be my Valentine with Chipotle, those kind of things. And they repost that content. And TikTok has 1.6 million followers or Chipotle has 1.6 million followers on TikTok. So they're doing really well. Um, another one, and this kind of goes along with what we talked about in Tandem's presentation about sports, the NBA is really popular on TikTok because they post those short clips that are not only the best plays, but just like funny zoom ups of players faces or reacting to stuff using trending sounds and making memes and making jokes with the players and that kind of stuff because it's that fun content that shows the side of the athlete that's not only the sports and shows more of the community and their personalities. Awesome. Melina is TikTok royalty so it's only appropriate that she answered that one. <laughs> So we have a question from G about a cryptocurrency. So by the way, G, we're, we're happy you made it. Um, what are your insights toward the mass trend in cryptocurrency investment in terms of Yaya Finance? Sam, it says you want to answer this one? Yes. So <clears throat> while my team didn't have any specific cryptocurrency insights, um, we did know that Yaya individuals are very interested in investing and in saving in general. Um, more so than spending, <clears throat> so. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. And looks like Maya wants to know about uh, LinkedIn. So Maya says, great presentation. I saw your statistics on Yaya LinkedIn usage and the lack thereof. Where should recruiters and employers be looking to appeal to these Yayas as potential employees? Michaela, you wanted to answer this one? Yeah, so this is something that we All right, I'm not sure if Michaela, you cut out or if I'm cutting out right now. Allie, did you wanna elaborate while we wait for Michaela's internet to get back on? Yeah, I can take it. Um, so what we found is that 70% of candidates look to company reviews on platforms like Glassdoor before they make career decisions. And 69% are likely to apply to a job if an employer actively manages um, their platforms on Instagram, Twitter. So really making sure that you have constant updates on your social platforms that Yaya employees can easily access and look to for information. Um, that's something that we see that Yaya employees are looking more to um, than LinkedIn, so. Awesome, thanks, Allie. And Michaela, do you wanna go for round two? So sorry, Wi-Fi was fine the whole morning and it just went a little crazy. Um, but we also found from our primary that when Yaya's are looking for jobs, they're leaning a lot on their familial and their like friendship ties and looking at their friendship circles and looking at networking and finding jobs. We found that ultimately 49% of Yaya's are also wanting to know somebody at the company so that they can get a look into things like how well they're doing at things like DEI. And if the things that they're saying on their website are aligning to their day-to-day -day operations, so ultimately showing Yaya employees that A, somebody within the company is willing to like back them and all of their efforts and with their authenticity, but then also just providing them a network of people. And we actually found that it'd be a great idea for companies to do a little bit more referral programs and things like that to get Yaya's into your company because they're obviously interested if they're asking their friends and their family for these connections. So just, you know, giving Yaya's a platform and a program where they can get into these companies and, you know, get that authentic um, word of mouth exchange versus just reading something on their website. Awesome. Thanks, Michaela. And I think that's a wonderful way to end this presentation. We don't want to keep you all too long. We've already had you for over an hour. So we all want to thank you so much for listening to us talk about um, 18, 20, 18 to 24 year olds. And if you want to know more about our research, like we said, our books are out now. So if you go to our social media, you can find those all there. You can read all three. And then as, if you want to relive this past hour, this video will be posted on YouTube soon. 
So thank you so much for coming and we hope we answered your questions. <laughs>